She thought she'd found something in one of her books that lined up with her research. And then she told me she talked to someone from another dimension. Hi, this is the Professional Amateur Hour coming to you with another review. This week, Leo sent me The Quantum Terror. And this movie was directed by Christopher Cooksey and stars Christina Cochell, Paula Marsonio Solinger, and Matt Blackwell, among others, of course. The story of this movie involves this woman, and she has to go find her sister who has disappeared in this small town in Texas. So she goes there and finds out her sister was doing something in like these tunnels underneath the, the city. And so she goes down there and it's like a situation, like a Lovecraftian situation where, you know, there's some outer gods peeking through different dimensions. And if you look at the right angle, you can see into the other dimension and whatnot. And so what will happen exactly? Well, you have to watch the movie and find out. All right, so let's discuss this movie. Well, what works with it? Well, it is kind of like this Lovecraftian story. Um, I'm a big fan of Lovecraft. I, I got a collection of his works here. I've read most of them. So I'm familiar with kind of um, what is happening. And, and, you know, with the Lovecraft story, it's all about the impossible angles. And so I thought they had a good interpretation of that. And all of their, these tunnels are meeting at impossible angles and whatnot. So that is definitely good. In addition, it does have like a David Lynchian kind of style of direction as well so it's all about that symbolism sometimes and, and whatnot and that all works together to make you know this fun little story other than that you know it does have practical effects and they look pretty good they have like this tentacle monster that you know comes out of the shadows and whatnot and that looked fine I, I gotta say but oh man like some of the situations you find yourself in with with this tentacle monster are pretty bizarre like, for example, they have these two female characters and, you know, they're making out and whatnot. And then these tentacles start coming out of the shadows and like working their way up the bodies. And just like, man, is this is this going to be like tentacle porn in, in a second? It doesn't turn out to be, which is, is good. But they do, you know, snatch their shirts off and, and run off and whatnot. So there's just so many bizarre things like that that go into this. It makes it feel very much like an art house film. And so if you are into art house films, you know, it's more about the experience. And with this one, it is a very low budget one. And so it's really about the experience more than anything else. And I would say it definitely has that, you know, experience feel to it. So it is something to uh, watch, especially if you are into art house films. And that brings me to what doesn't work with this film. Well, the sound for me is all over the place. I know I just watched the screener, so maybe they'll, they'll tweak the sound later, but... The sound, yeah, the sound is all over the place. It seems like every different angle that, that, that I shoot at, the sound quality is all off. So like one person speaks fine and then the next one sounds like tinny, then the next one sounds like it's recorded from a distance, like it's all over the place. And so I don't know what they can do to, to kind of correct that, but something should be done. Other than that, oh man, this tunnel that they have to go into. Um, I know it's low budget, but at the same time, it's just like this really crappy kind of tunnel that they have to go into under under <laughs> a road and just like a little creek that goes in there. I'm sure there's probably like 10 other different tunnels that would have worked better, but it just seems like this is the one across the street. So this is the one that they are using. Even around here, like there's so many interesting tunnels and alleyways and stuff that you can get lost in. And it just seems like, yeah, it, they, they could have chosen that difference. So... I don't know if they have a location scout or, or whatnot. I, I imagine with their low budget, they didn't, but, um, and they did a good job with their low budget. It's just some things like that, that really do have kind of affect the production level of it. Also with the script, I think some of the dialogue really kind of doesn't work for me. Like they have these two lesbian characters and then they're making dick jokes out of nowhere. And I'm just like, why would they make dick jokes? Like that doesn't seem like the type of humor that they would have. And so that was strange. Uh, there's a few other things that are quite strange as well. In addition, oh, the art house quality. You know, I did say it was art house. I enjoyed it. It makes it like a big rabbit hole to go down. But I think for normal people, they would probably be disoriented by that for sure. But for me, it's fine. But yeah, so a normal person, this is probably not going to be the movie for you. So who would I recommend this movie for? Well, I think if you are an art house fan, then yeah, you can definitely check this one out. It's very artistic. 
Other than that, if you're a Lovecraftian fan and you like those impossible angles and whatnot, sure, why not give it a chance? As for a score, I gotta give it 3.4 because it was mildly interesting. And having said that, I think that's all I wanted to say. So like and subscribe and I'll see you next time!